in this last section of chapter five, we're going to look at the ratio test, the root test, and then we're going to do a summary of all the different tests that we've looked at. So first, looking at the ratio test, if you have a series that has non-zero terms, if you find the nth plus one term, divide by the nth term, take the absolute values, and then find the limit as n approaches infinity, we can use the value of that limit to determine whether or not the series converges or diverges. Now, if the limit is less than one or greater than or equal to zero, then we can say that the series converges absolutely. If the limit is greater than one or infinity, then we would say that the series diverges. If the limit is equal to one, then the test would be inconclusive and we would have to try another test. Okay, so we have three examples. We're gonna walk through the um, ratio test. In this particular example, I didn't bother putting absolute value signs here because these terms are gonna be positive anyways. But you wanna take the nth plus one term, divide it by the nth term, and take the limit as n goes to infinity. When I take the denominator and I do a flip and multiply and I clean things up, I'm gonna get the limit as n goes to infinity of two over n plus one. That limit is zero. Now, based on the ratio test, that tells me that this series converges absolutely. Looking at the next example, again, in this case, I didn't bother putting absolute value signs because these terms are always going to be positive. But you want to take the nth plus one term and divide it by the nth term and take the limit as n goes to infinity. When we do a flip and multiply and we clean this up, we're going to get the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 raised to the power of n plus 1 divided by n to the nth times n plus 1 in the denominator. Then I can get rid of an n plus 1 on the top and the bottom, and that leaves me with the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 to the nth all over n to the nth. Now, to clean this up a little bit, to make it easier to find the limit, since these are both being raised to the power of n, I'm going to take n plus 1 over n and raise all of that to the nth power, which is this. So I'll have the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 over n, all raised to the nth. And then when I split this up into separate fractions and I take n over n plus 1 over n, I get this all raised to the nth power. And when I take the limit as n goes to infinity of this expression, we have seen this in the past and we know that this is equivalent to e. Now e is approximately 2.7, which is greater than one. So based on the ratio test, we would say that the series diverges. In this last example for the ratio test, notice we have an alternating series. So we have a negative one to the end, so it's going to alternate between negative and positive numbers, which means in this case, I'm going to have to put absolute values around it because this isn't always going to be positive. So remember, I want to um, find the absolute value of the nth plus one term divided by the nth term and then take the limit. So to remove these absolute values, I need to get rid of this factor here that's going to cause me to have negatives. So I'm just going to drop this out. What I'm going to be left with is n plus 1 factorial squared over 2 times n plus 1 factorial, all divided by n factorial squared over 2n factorial. Now, when I do a flip and multiply, this is what I have. Now, this is going to get pretty messy, so I tried to write in all my steps rather than skip steps like I did in the previous two. When I multiply this out, I have n plus 1 factorial squared, so that means I have 2 n plus 1 factorials and then times 2 n factorial in the top. In the bottom here, since I want some things to start dropping out, what I did was is I wrote 2n plus 2 factorial 
as, and I got the 2n plus 2 because I distributed this 2 here. So I factored this 2n plus 2 factorial into 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1 times 2n factorial. So all of this is equivalent to this. This n factorial squared is just n factorial twice. So when I start dropping things off, I can get rid of these two n factorials here. And I color coded it here in yellow so that you could see how things are dropping off. Okay, so those I get rid of. Then this n plus 1 factorial and this n plus 1 factorial, I factored that as n plus 1 times n factorial. And I did the same for this one. That way I can get rid of the n factorial. So I got rid of these two on top with these two n factorials on the bottom. So that leaves me with n plus 1 times n plus 1 in the top and 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1 in the denominator. And now that I have this cleaned up a bit, I'm going to take the limit as n goes to infinity. Now, because this is a rational expression, I know that really what I'm looking at, if I use a trick where I divide everything by n and anything that still has an n in the denominator approaches 0. So what I'm really looking at is my leading coefficients. So if I were to actually multiply this out, I would have an n squared for my leading coefficient. And downstairs, I would have a 4n squared for my leading coefficient. So when I take the limit as n goes to infinity, I have 1 over 4. And because that falls between 0 and 1, due to the ratio test, I would say that this converges absolutely. We're going to talk about the root test. The root test says if you have a series and you take the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of the nth term and you get the limit is between 0 and 1, possibly including 0, then we can say that the series converges absolutely. If the limit is greater than 1 or infinity, then the series diverges. And if you get the limit is equal to 1, then we would say it's inconclusive and we would need to try another test. Now, in the book, when I copied this, it looks like it's hard to see that n there. So I rewrote it up here so that you can see it clearly. But that's the nth root. Looking at our first example of the root test, we have the series n squared plus 3n, all raised to the nth power, divided by 4n squared plus 5, all raised to the nth power. So when we take the absolute value of this, knowing that we're using values of n between 1 and infinity, I know that these are all going to be positive here. So it's not necessary for me to put the absolute value under the square root. However, if we possibly had negative terms, we would need to make sure that we put those absolute values in there. Now, when I take the nth root of this expression, this can simplify because we're doing the nth root of something raised to the nth power. Essentially, the root and the exponents undo each other. So I'm left with the limit as n approaches infinity of n squared plus 3n all over 4n squared plus 5. Now, again, when I take the limit as n goes to infinity, this is a rational expression. And the degree on the top is the same as the degree on the bottom. So when I divide everything by n squared and I take the limit as n goes to infinity, I'm left with my leading coefficients, which would be 1 over 4. So because 1 fourth is between 0 and 1, based on the root test, we would say this converges absolutely. Looking at our second example for the root test, Again, since we're using values 1 or greater, looking at this, I'm not going to have any negative terms here. So I don't have to put absolute values in this case under the nth root. Um, but be aware that you may have to if you have like an alternating series or something like that. 
Now, when I take the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of this expression, the nth root and the powers of n cancel each other out in a sense, and you're left with limit of n goes to infinity of what's left underneath, which is n over the natural log of n. Now, when I take the limit as n goes to infinity, what I get is that both the top and the denominator approach infinity. So we have it in a form where we're going to be forced to use L'Hopital. So I'm going to take the derivative of the top and the bottom. When I take the derivative of n, I get 1. And when I take the derivative of the natural log of n, I get 1 over n. Now when I take the limit as n goes to infinity, the denominator here, the 1 over n, as I plug in really, really large numbers, this fraction 1 over n is going to get really, really small fast, which means the whole entire fraction is going to get big really fast. So this is going to approach infinity, which means this series diverges based on the root test. In the last part of this lesson, we're going to kind of step back, take a breath, and summarize what we've done so far. And in chapter five, we covered a lot of different tests on how to tell if a series converges or diverges. Now, sometimes it can get overwhelming and you're not sure when to use which test. So in this last lesson, I took out of the book um, a problem solving strategy that you can use to help you walk through to pick a test to use. And that doesn't mean that this is 100% helpful all the time. Sometimes you might have to try a different test, but this will give you some guidance on how to narrow it down on which test to use. Now, the problem solving strategy, the way you want to look at this is you just want to walk through the steps. If number one isn't the case, then drop down to number two. Okay, so looking at step number one, first you want to look to see, am I familiar with the series that you're looking at? Is it harmonic? Is it a P series? Is it a geometric series? These are the things that we're familiar with and that we can tell by looking at it um, if it's going to diverge or converge. So if step number one doesn't work, then you jump down to step number two. The next thing you want to look at, if number one doesn't work, you want to look to see, is it an alternating series? If it's an alternating series, try using the alternating series test. If that doesn't work, jump down to number three. Is the series similar to a P series or a geometric series? If it is, you can try the comparison test or the limit comparison test and compare it to a P series or a geometric series that you're familiar with. If three doesn't work, then jump down to four. Do the terms in the series contain a factorial or a power? If you have it in this form, B and some sequence raised to the nth, or if you have a factorial, then you're gonna use the root test or the ratio test and all these don't work, then just jump to number five, which says you use the divergence test. But this does not really provide any additional information. It just tells you if it diverges. And you can also try the integral test in this case as well. Now, below this strategy, I cut and paste this from the book. I have all the tests that we covered with how to draw conclusions from the test in the second column and then comments in the third column. I tried to get this to fit all in one page, but it just wouldn't, at least not without the print being so small, it's hard to read. Now, as you go through, you can see the comment area is actually pretty helpful too, because it gives you hints on when to use it. So for example, like where it says the limit comparison test here, it says you typically wanna use this for a series similar to the geometric or P series. Um, like, so these comments in here will give you hints on when to use it. Um, so here's another one here for the ratio test. You want to usually use that when you have factorials or exponentials. The root test you want to usually use when you have some uh, sequence raised to the nth power, when you have powers of n. So this is going to be really helpful for you. 
So the last few examples, we're going to walk through using that strategy to come up with a starting point of what test to use. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be the test that helps us figure it out, but this is going to help you learn how to use that strategy in order to walk through and find a place to start. So looking at this series here, this is not a familiar series. This isn't a P series and it's not a geometric series. So that's number one. So we're gonna jump to number two. Number two says check to see if it's alternating. This is not an alternating sequence. It doesn't hop back and forth between positive and negative terms. However, when we look at option number three, we can compare this to the harmonic series, one over n. Since this is a rational expression here, the behavior is gonna be similar to one over n because if I use the trick where I divide everything by n to the highest power, which in this case is three, if I divide everything by n to the third, that's gonna leave me with a one over n. So this is gonna behave like one over n. So I'm gonna compare this to the harmonic series. And I'm going to use either the comparison test or the limit comparison test. Either one is fine. You start with one, and if it doesn't work, you try another. So this is where I would start um, if I was trying to figure out if this converged or diverged. In the second example, we'll walk through the steps. Step number one says to look to see if it's a familiar series like the P series or the geometric series. And in this case, it is not. However, when we get to step number two, we see that this is an alternating series. So we wanna try to find absolute convergence. We wanna take out that factor of negative one and try to figure out if this converges absolutely. And we can use the ratio test as well to do this because we see factorials in there. So that is where I would start on this one. In example part C, we have the series e to the n over n to the third. This is not a familiar series. It's not a p series or a geometric. It's not alternating. So we're going to skip, skip over um, strategy two. Strategy three, it's not similar to a P-series or a geometric series. Step four, it does contain powers of N, so it might be best to try the root test. And then if that doesn't work, we would try using the divergence test. But the root test is where I would start because I see a power of N there. Okay, in the last example, part D, Again, when we go through the steps, it's not a familiar series, it's not an alternating series, it's not something similar to a geometric or P-series where we could use um, the comparison or the limit comparison. But when we get to option four, we do see it contains powers of N, so I would use, in this case, the root test. That is where I would start. So use the strategy box and use the summary of all the different tests that I put there in your notes to help you get through the homework. And just remember, if one test doesn't work, you can find another test that will work. Sometimes you have to try more than one, but that strategy box will give you a starting point.